All right, welcome back to another Coen Shishan Reviews. And I am over here at Nakano Broadway in front of Mandarake on the third floor, taking a look at the showcases. Um, I'm over here just to pick up a couple things at Takoshe, one of my favorite bookstores here in Tokyo. I need to get at least one or two things for myself and then one thing for a friend. I wish I could read French because I would buy some Mobius. Although that hasn't stopped me before. I have some Philippe Joulet that's in French that I can't really read. But right here in the middle, Heaven's Door. 2,500 yen is a good price for that. But Koike Keiichi was just released by Last Gasp in English. It's his only title available in English. I strongly re recommend picking that up because, as you can see, even like... In Japanese, it's more expensive than $20, and uh, it's the only title of his translated into English, uh, Heaven's Door. I have Ultra Heaven, the three Tonkobon set, and I paid more than $20 for it. Here's some Noro Michiru, which I really want to get into collecting because, you know, I love my weird and wild horror uh, especially that eagle cover right there with the girl standing is wild, but 3,850 yen each. And I know once I start buying them, I'll have to have them all, which means before I know it, I've spent a couple hundred dollars on one mangaka. That one's a little bit cheaper, and then on the right there is 6,600 yen. But the covers are so sick. Um, I guess it's kind of like, you know, Pokemon or anything else. Once you start collecting them, you have to have them all. But, yeah, like I said, the covers are sick. That girl right there in the bottom right-hand corner has strong Inuki Kaneko vibes. I want this back in the corner. That's Reiwa Kaiki Gaho, or Illustrations of Reiwa Era Monsters. We are in the Reiwa Era now. That looks so good. And here we have some Hora Gurume, or Hora Gourmet. I have never read one of those, though. And... The art of Japanese bathing, but in French, man, the French get some cool translations. Uh, there's a big Sento or public bathhouse boom here in Japan now. I actually live on a road called Sento Road, Bathhouse Road, because I'm in between two bathhouses that are really popular and uh, they get crowded, man, get crowded. So I would love to have the art of Japanese bathing, but uh. okay, we're over here at Takoshe. One of my favorite bookstores. There's some Toshio Saiki. Um, I always look at that particular book in the window, but it's a couple hundred dollars. It's pretty expensive. But coincidentally, while I was here, I did buy something that happened to have some Toshio in it, which I will show you at the end of this video. I'll show you what I picked up, just a couple small things. So it won't take long. Screw style down there in the corner. Um, there was a Sakabashira Imiri exhibition going on while I was in Takoshe. Uh, yokai artists. Uh, these are all original paintings, but a bit expensive. Um, 55,000 yen each, so about $550 each. But that was cool just to run into those. Uh, he also does Sofbi if you're into toy collecting. Uh, someone in our Discord group, Koenjishan Reviews, link in the banner, um, had picked some up recently. Now we're up on the fourth floor at Mandarake Mania. I need some Akira Club in my life. It's around 50 bucks. I'll break down and get it at some point. And there's Akira World. I came up here to see if I could find some uh, Shirato Sanpei Kashihon. So, but I found this. Ikegami Ryoichi. His, uh, who did Japanese Spider-Man, did uh, Crying Freeman, did so much cool stuff, right? Um... One of his early Kashihon there, which I really want because I'm heavily collecting him. Uh, Koike Kazuo, Kano Seisaku, that whole crew. Uh, Goseki. I've been collecting all of them and I want this, but $220. Uh, Subarashiki Jidai is the name of it there. That cover on the right was pretty sick too. This is just kind of a some showcases across 
from Mandarake Mania. There's some old Mizuki Shigeru pre Gegege no Kitaro. Um, that's volume one. He only did one, two, three. And then Takeuchi uh, Kanko took over from four. And uh, Kanko actually ended up being a longtime assistant for Bonten Taro. Some more Mizuki box sets. Some old Gegege no Kitaro. His, that one right there on the right is Kashihon stuff. Reprints of his Kashihon sets. Look at that. Satanic looking cover. That's so sick. Yeah, some of these covers are really cool. But also some of, some of them are like, you know, mangaka that I'm not so familiar with. So it's hard for me to spend the money. There's Ogon Bato for $400. Famous. But... Um, I have a reprint that's pretty nice that I got for $8. I don't think I need the Golden Bat for $400. There's many other things. Sci-fi covers are just the dopest. Look at that. So cool. Noroi no Yakata. The cursed mansion. Yeah, there's some cool stuff in these showcases. But I wasn't over here for long. Just kind of cruising around a bit. And here we are back in front at the showcases. Satoshi Kon. Protégé, too, of course. Otomo. Um, the showcases, these are the showcases in front of Mandarake Mania. So, you know, usually I come over here and I spend a bit more time, but today I was on a mission and by this point right here, I'm starting to get hungry. So I'm about ready to bail on out of here. There's the Namco Game Center and I'm just going to go grab some lunch really quick. Ashita no Jo, famous manga character, of course, and up here. I don't know why I took these videos of this, but I was like, oh, there's Ashino Joe again, and then there's a Spider-Man over here. I don't know what's on his leg. Nakano no Shokudo, or Nakano Cafeteria. I'll have to go there sometime, but it wasn't open. I was over here on a Monday, and instead I went to this Korean place. But if there's something you saw in the video that you would like to see more of or something at Nakano Broadway you'd like me to get clips of, let me know in the comments down below because uh, I'm usually over there once a week. But at any rate, let's take a look at some of the stuff I picked up while I was over at Takoshe. All right, this is what I got while I was over at Takoshe at Nakano Broadway. Uh, first of all, Junichiro Saito. Saito Junichiro, I've really been into lately. I actually already had this. This is Shit Chofu Mystery America. Um, this came out at the end of last year, 2021. This is his third volume. He started doing manga in 2017. There's an awesome interview with him that's translated, subbed in English, up on Archipel or Archipel's YouTube channel. So check that out. I'll put a link down below. And I wanted to get his first two volumes. So this is his second volume from 2020. This is Shit Chofu Gangster Journey. And then before that is just Shit Chofu. Unfortunately, they didn't have Shit Chofu, but I found it online. It actually should be coming today. So I get to read that next. I already finished these two. This extra copy I had picked up for a friend. You know who you are. So uh, here you go, homie. Um, it's sitting here waiting for you for your next trip over here to Japan land. Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go into these in more detail, probably on my Patreon page, because they are hardcore. They're full of violence, sex, and nudity. All the things that we like. Actually, there's not much sex, but a lot of nudity. I mean, Cho, our main protagonist, she never wears clothes. This one, unlike Shit Chofu America, is set mostly, not all, but mostly in Mexico and South America and the Caribbean. The color pages are dope. 
So you can see it's pretty hard. I mean, it gets hardcore. Lots of death. This creeper gets eaten by a giant alligator. Shit Chofu Gangsta Journey. So these are really fun. Um, I like to buy new from especially new mangaka that I really like. And if it's newer stuff to support the mangaka. Because mostly what I buy is retro, gekiga, older stuff, right? And while I didn't get to buy any paintings from Sakabashira Miri, they had these uh, cards. These are just kind of uh, business cards for Takoshi explaining the event, the Sakabashira Imiri. Did I say Miiri before? Imiri. That's pretty cool. They just had three of them. I think in the video I said yokai artist, kaiju artist. Self-proclaimed kaiju artist. I did not mean yokai. Although there's probably some yokai themes in here as well. And then on the very top shelf where no one really looks over there at Takoshi, I had found some vintage men's magazines. I collect a lot of retro magazines, weird vintage stuff. So these are soft. So obviously I can't really show a lot of this content on YouTube. So this is the kind of stuff, uh, Chofu shit, Mystery America, or these retro weird old magazines that I track down. This is the kind of stuff I show on my Patreon page. So go over to Koenji Sean Reviews on Patreon if you want some of the more wild content that I can't post up here on YouTube. Um, all of these bookmarks are manga. It's littered with manga and nude pics of ladies that are probably in their 70s and 80s now. But uh, there's some cool Gekiga stuff. Yeah. Kind of sexy Gogo 13 Saito Tako type stuff. I'm not familiar with the mangaka for this with this like particular mangaka, but that's pretty cool. Um I'm definitely going to do some flip throughs of these on the Patreon later. This one also Yanagi? I'm not too sure what that kanji is. Masaru? This one looks like a murder mystery. A lot of times they're gangster themed and stuff. So that is soft. And this one was 1973, June and August. I actually picked these up cheap. There are 100, a couple for 200, and one for 500. And then I found these. These are Punch no Kita nude for men. And all of these are also illustrations or manga that I have bookmarked here. So you can see there's a lot of stuff in there. Mixed in throughout a bunch of weird, very kind of artsy, but not sometimes it's artsy with like kind of drawings over nude photos and sometimes it's like a girl bowling nude or someone riding a motorcycle nude pretty weird stuff but punchy punch was famous because they also released this braku punchy which was all kind of weird and erotic and ultra violent manga this is from uh ijima shiro's uh, re-release this is volume two uh, i have all three of these there's three of these re-released and um yeah, these Brak Punchy are super hard to find. I always look for them on Yahoo Auctions or Medicari or some of these other platforms, but really hard to come by. So when I saw these Punchy for Men, I was like, there's surely going to be some cool manga and illustrations in them. Um, this one here, I think this is the one the spine's already broken. I might have to scan this, see how 
damaged the spine is here. The pages are coming out. And I was flipping through and I found some. Oh, Toshio Saiki. Pretty cool, huh? And tons of other stuff in here as well. And all of these have sick, like, retro movie posters. These are all movie ads in the back. City Beneath the Sea. Robert Wagner, who did a lot of fun stuff back in the 70s. These are from 1971 and 72, I believe. Yeah, September 71 and January of 72. Here's a couple pages I can show you out of this one. Some wild manga. This giant boner man comes in because he says that this lady's husband has a small peener. There's some foreign European artists in these as well. And some Gekiga longer manga in here as well. So, if you want to see more of the insides of these, hop on over to my Patreon. All right. That's the little bit that I did pick up while I was over there at Takoshe. If there's something you'd like to see more of, let me know in the comments. Thanks to everyone who subs, likes, and shares. Clicking that sub button helps me out a ton and gets more people into the weird and wild manga and retro stuff that I am into. And until next time, everyone, thanks for watching and matane.